through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 228. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the release of Side Effects, we're going to be talking Catherine Zeta Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, Probably a, because we've talked about everybody else that Soderbergh usually uses. And Soderbergh. And himself. Soderbergh himself. Uh, to be fair, she's a pretty, <laughs> a pretty like good no actress in her own right. There's no reason to talk about yeah. Catherine Zeta Jones. She's, she's pretty cool in her own right, yeah. but yes, it did kind of tumble down a few choices <laughs> before we got to her. It's like Jude Law. Oh, no, wait. Uh, Soderbergh. Oh. Ch Ch Channing Tatum. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'd even done Channing Tatum. Uh, That's how extensive we are here at the MacGuffin cast. Some of us really like... The Tates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say so, uh, step up, you know, whatnot. Yeah, so. I'm not going to get too far into that. But no. um, <laughs> we're going to start uh, a while back for Catherine Zeta-Jones. Mm -hmm. She's done a lot of stuff in her career, and obviously this is going to be a smattering of stuff. Yes. Um, probably the first thing I saw her in, but I didn't agree. realize it was her until retrospectively, mm -hmm. was The Phantom. Yes. The this, awkward Billy Zane-fueled yes. uh, rehash uh, of a, what, radio program, I believe? Or an old serial? From yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, he plays, you know, a superhero with an alternate rich person identity. Mm -hmm. The one that uh, immediately paralleled with this, in my mind, was The Shadow. Yes, definitely. So it's, it's sort of, you know, Batman. But you know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> sure. But that was good. So uh, yeah, I'm, ta I'm, I'm most, talking things oh. that were transitioned oh, yes. poor okay. way. Yes, I thought you meant like or the actual story itself. Yeah, but yes, you're right. Uh, I mean, you know, it's kind of funny this film in a lot of ways. In retrospect, you know, I don't really dislike the movie. Mm. Like, I think the movie itself is okay. It's I, fine. I kind of don't understand why it was so hated upon. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it was definitely before the rise of like comic book movies and stuff yes, like definitely. that. I mean, if it had been made later, maybe it would have been Probably. better received. Cause it was it, also before the r real big rise of CGI, so there was a lot mm -hmm. of like sets and trying to have things be costumes rather than being fixed digitally later, which a lot of things do now to make the like, Yeah, that might have hurt it. I kind of actually like it when they do things real. Like, that's kind of oh, one of the too. reasons why I like the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. I mean, you think about it, like think about this. Um, First up, Billy Zane. I mean, yeah. I guess this is probably pretty close to when Titanic came out. Yeah. Maybe before? I don't it remember. I, Titanic was, was that 97? Okay, we'll say it was 97. I'm yeah, we'll go with that. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was it was right before that blew up. And mm -hmm. maybe if it came out, it would have been bigger. I don't know. He's a villain in that. Maybe that hurt that. But Billy Zane is a fairly likable dude. Yeah. Like, he's he, very he's charming. Very in this. strange career. Yeah, he's he can be very, yeah, he can be really dark. But mm -hmm. he can also be very charming. Yeah. And he's fairly charming in this yeah. movie. Uh, you have Christy Swanson mm -hmm. as the female uh, lead who... I mean, I guess at this point, really, her big thing was probably Buffy. Yeah. So, definitely. I mean, she was a very attractive young lady mm -hmm. who was definitely popular. Mm -hmm. I mean, can't hurt her. Um, the, the villain, I mean, maybe he wasn't a big enough name, but Treat Williams. Yeah. Like, oh, love I love the Treat substitute. Williams. Oh, fucking love uh, Yeah, I mean, there's any number yeah. of ones. Like, I mean, it, it's just, I, I, I don't necessarily think they're... I, I think this is a classic example of what you like to say, looked good on paper. Yeah, like you're looking at it, you're like we're rehashing a story that's already been popular. And like we're gonna make the director a superhero. Simon Windsor. I mean, you might not know him by name, but he directed the Prisoner TV series. Mm -hmm. He did uh, Quigley Down Under, Free Willy, and then Lightning Jack Operation Dumbo Drop. <laughs> hey, uh, hey. Don't you be tossing D Operation Dumbo Drop in a heap of bad movies. That's a great movie. Yes. That's a Real great cinematic movie. classic. It's, it is a cinematic classic. <laughs> How often do you have a elephant throw up on a boat? And you film it. <laughs> I yeah, don't know, but you know that's real high on my list of things I judge movies by. Co comedy a movie in Vietnam? Come on, those are those don't happen that often. That's true. Okay, but you sorry. know, I'll stop defending Operation Dumbo Drop. It's it's like, it's funny because this film exists in a, a niche where you think it, like it's, it's a lot of people don't like it or don't mm -hmm. talk about it, but like it's not bad enough to be nominated for a Razzie. No, yeah, it's really exactly. not good enough to be nominated for anything. Really, yeah, it's very much the Jason Statham effect. It just mm -hmm. rides the middle line, and some people really, really hate it because it doesn't ride it in one direction too high, and other people are like, Meh, it's not bad because same thing, it doesn't ride that meter too much. I think it's interesting that you know they originally uh, won. It had 
a muscular costume for Billy Zane to wear, like with fake mm -hmm. muscles, but he pumped iron for over a year to fill wow. the costume. He was built in the yeah. movie, so that's impressive. By the time the film was actually got around to being made, they were like, oh, I guess we'll take all those fake muscles out because he was so ripped. I think I just assumed it was all fake mm -hmm. because he, he like, it's the costume is... It's a pretty tight is, yeah. costume, so and now it, you can know that's all Billy well, Zane. Well done, Billy Zane. In terms of Catherine Zeta-Jones, I mean, she was one of the supporting yes. villainesses, I guess you would call mm -hmm. her. Yeah. And... That works. I mean, she's, I mean... Let's she, not say forgettable. No, she's not forgettable. Like, supporting she didn't. She didn't pop <laughs> as much in this movie as she did in later movies yes. that we'll talk about. In retrospect, you definitely can sort of pick up on her being a somewhat charming mm -hmm. character. I mean, it's sort of, sort of in some ways reminding me of like a, a sky captain in the world of tomorrow. Yes. Where, you know, it's... You know, there's there's a sort of tongue-in-cheek element mm -hmm. to the villains mm -hmm. and whatnot, you know. And um, she definitely does that well. I mean, she's not probably played up enough to yeah. really be a huge factor in the movie. But, you know, she does, that. She does well in the screen time she's yeah. given. She's not bad. Where she really started to make the turn, though, was a couple years later with The Mask of Zorro. Yes. I think nobody is going to be surprised that we're yes. talking about this film. And if you haven't seen the film, you've probably seen her most famous scene in the film when all of her clothes get ripped off. Yes, with uh, Antonio Banderas' mm -hmm. sword chopping off her shirt. It's all she, done by wires. They just yanked it all yeah, off. Yeah, she had her hair covering up her mm -hmm. um, private parts. Yes, if she yes. Um, it's, I mean... I love this film. It's a great movie. To and be it's, honest, it's, I think it's like probably the only good Zorro adaption that's happened in our lifetime. I would say, yeah, I was, I was thinking about this when we were going to talk about this. This is one of the few examples of a remake of something really being very well done and mm -hmm. maybe even being better than the original. I mean, I, I, I'm yeah. hard-pressed to look at this it's and true. think of what I dislike about the yeah. movie. It's The only thing I've ever had a problem with this movie fell away when I was looking into trivia for the film, which was I was like, Anthony Hopkins, really? Like, uh, they mm. have all these, like, authentic, you know, Hispanic actors okay, to play yeah, these roles, but sure. interestingly enough, you know who was originally going to play Anthony Hopkins' role? Who? Um, what's his name? The dude from the Adams Family and and Raul Julia. Raul Julia was, but he died, so they totally had a dude ready to play it. Oh, well, isn't Catherine Zeta Jones like Welsh or something well, yeah, too? She's actually Welsh, my peeps. <laughs> but I mean, appropriately looking, Anthony Hopkins does not look Hispanic at all. I mean, they make him look ish. Yeah, I, okay, I can I can kind of see that criticism. That's more what I mean. Sure, I can sort of see that. But you know, I I mean I I think that's a fair criticism, but he's so fair, good as that's sort of, such a small criticism. He's such a good he's mentor so character. Good. He's yeah. so good as that sort of mentor mm -hmm. like the film is both good action. Yes. It's very funny. Mm -hmm. It's very it's interesting. Moving. It's not it's not like a, a very obvious superhero story where you're like, he's gonna have the origin, he's gonna defeat the bad guy. I mean there's much more there's more. Uh, there's to a lot of that. political backstory mm -hmm. going on, which is interesting. I mean it's I'm not I was kinda surprised to find out that uh, Antonio Banderas' character, um, Joaquin Marietta, I think. Alejandro. Uh, Alejandro Marietta. Um, is based on Joaquin Marietta, who's an actual historical figure that uh, is uh, widely believed to be the inspiration for the original Zorro character. Hmm. And he was a Mexican born in Sonora who moved to California to find his fortune, but after being beaten and robbed by American gold miners, he swore that he would avenge his dishonor. And he led a group of bandits in the California wilderness, killing anyone who stood in their way. Wow. He was literally so much the stuff of legends that he was used by Mexicans as a source of patriotism and by Americans as a reason to hang anyone who spoke Spanish. Wow. That's pretty, that's pretty powerful. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing that... There are a few things I want to talk about quickly. Yeah. Um, number one, Catherine Zeta-Jones. The thing I like most about her character is that she's not just a damsel in distress. Correct. She's badass. Like, there's mm -hmm. some awesome sword yeah. fights with her mm -hmm. in the movie. So she's Which very... About, if you're going to break out in a role, be an awesome, like, multifaceted female totally. character. I mean, <laughs> I, th I think, you know, it really popped, like, uh, she's very charming, as we yes. spoke about already. Um, she really could do action well, mm -hmm. which, I mean, definitely led to stuff later in her mm -hmm. career. I Clearly mean, a pretty lady, and that's was, like, you know, girl. I mean, yeah. that helped... I mean, it's as superficial as it is, that definitely helped in this role. Yep. So. Also, directed by Martin Campbell, my boy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously he did Goldeneye. <laughs> mm -hmm. He did um, 
No Escape. Yeah. He did, um, a little Ray Liotta throwback here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He did uh, Casino Royale. Mm -hmm. Like, so he's done some stuff. He did the Green Lantern, which a lot of people hated. I think uh, it's not as bad as a lot of people think, but you know, it's definitely not his best. We can work. very much say that at least the guy knows his action. He's, he's a very he's, fun guy. I, yeah. think he's, I think he's. Um, Kind of unfortunately overlooked a lot of times. A lot yeah. of people don't know his name, and he deserves a lot more credit. I He's agree. a very talented guy. So he did this. In terms of the response to this movie, and this will make a lot of sense. Number one, if it was not nominated for a few Academy Awards for like sound and stuff, which okay. lost to Saving Private Ryan. No, totally understandable. There. But here's where things get interesting. It was also nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Comedy or Musical, which it lost to Shakespeare in Love. Honestly, like I would give this the award over Shakespeare in Love in retrospect, but you know, Shakespeare in Love is one of those movies I want to be expunged from the collective mm -hmm. world memory. Mm -hmm. um, Antonio Banderas lost uh, the Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Comedy or Musical to Michael Caine for Little Voice. Feel like in retrospect we might want to mm. give that to Antonio Banderas yeah. since he's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing that stands out for Catherine Zeta Jones. She won the Blockbuster Award for fe favorite female newcomer, which is okay. funny because she'd already been in films. But yeah. she okay. really. Yeah, she, she really broke, popped. She, she broke through. And she was nominated for the MTV Award for Breakthrough Female Performance, but lost to Katie Holmes for Disturbing Behavior. Ugh. Like, if really? Like, she was way Yeah, like, better. Dawson's Creek already existed, too. Well, not, it? Like, mm. it did. It did, for sure. But you even think about just, like, Disturbing Behavior versus Mask of Zora. Yeah. She's way more memorable from oh, this definitely. than Katie Holmes is from Disturbing oh, yeah. Behavior. but. I swear you should make a secondary podcast that's just called the 2020s, where you just oh, there's a, there is actually 2020 really? awards. <laughs> like it's a thing. They're having awards uh, from a guy in Seattle who's going to be on the MacGuffin at some point. The audio version. See this guy. Mm. See this guy. What he does. Do that. He's a, his fingers are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll continue right along yes. though. Uh, jumping just uh, let's see, was it one year forward wow. from in, uh, from uh, Mask of Zorro? Mm -hmm. We have Entrapment. This is again another one of those ones that she really, dips beneath lasers. Yeah. Whoa. She <laughs> she. Hot. Like everybody who was alive at that point remembers the trailer where she's she's navigating through mm -hmm. the lasers and in a tight jumpsuit. Yes, this is. Uh, this is I guess Sean Connery is also in the film. As yeah, well. oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she plays uh, Catherine Zeta Jones plays an insurance agent who is sent to track down and capture an art thief. Yes, um, which no, it's not the first time that's happened. Yeah, um, yeah. So, and what, you know, entrapment. For, is obviously the term is very uh, well known legally as when you basically trick someone into a way of legally prosecuting them for something where you kind of like false pretenses to lure someone in so that you Isn't can get them for something else. Isn't it illegal to entrapment though? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it was what it, you like set up a false pretense that so you can arrest them for something else. Yeah. yeah. So, um, the film is directed by John Emile, mm. uh, who did Copycat, The Man Who Knew Too Little, the Bill Murray mm -hmm. movie, and. Um, the core and the singing detective, but the TV version. Um, you know, I, <laughs> like the film itself is okay. Dang, it's like, all right. I mean, the film itself is kind of um, obvious. Yeah, where it's I going. Mean, I would say with the name like Entrapment. Yeah, I mean, what is the, what is that um, Pierce Brosnan movie with uh, Rene Russo? Thomas Crown. Yeah, affair? that's the one that I think is like the better version yes, of this. Definitely. Like it's the same sort of premise as an, of an art thief mm -hmm. who's trying to be caught by an insurance yeah. agent. But like, I think that you know Thomas the Thomas Crown affair has a believable love interest, mm -hmm. unlike this yes. film, which uh, Catherine Zeta Jones and Sean Connery's love scene was voted the second worst of all time by readers in Amer of an American movie mag magazine film in 2003. They were narrowly beaten by Sharon Stone and Joe Pesci in Casino. Like, worst love scenes of all time. Catherine Zeta Jones is way too hot to be making out with old Sean Connery. Yeah, I mean the thing is like Ugh. it's. The, the story itself is kind of vanilla, and as I said, yeah, like it's just vanilla. like everything is better done better in uh, Thomas Crown yes. Affair. Like you know, it's it's much more of a heist movie mm -hmm. than this. This is much more like of a drawn out sort of like attempt at being yeah. sort of an action movie. Yeah, this which, is yeah, this is very very little dramatic tension I feel in this movie, and almost more like a dramatic pretense for a love story. Yeah, I agree with that. Whereas. Thomas Crown Affair was there was a, a dramatic story in the background, yes. but they built a love story upon mm -hmm. it. Not that it was just like, I, I guess you would say that the 
the action in Entrapment is the part that's going to entrap you oh, into oh, the story. Oh, Building on oh, what you see, said earlier. See what he did? Yeah, 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 you got yeah. me. That's the that's the actual <laughs> entrapment of the movie. You think you're getting an action movie and but you get boom, the love you get, story. You get clocked with Catherine Zeta yeah. Jones and Sean Connery yeah. locking lips. So I will give Catherine Zeta Jones the fact that uh, she performed most, some sources say all, probably not likely. Most of the climbing and gymnastics in herself in the rafters in that mm. famous I Stole the Rembrandt scene with the lasers and mm. everything. So, I mean, you That's know, cool. at least she's, you know, getting her, her I can do my own stunts chops in. As we said with Statham, sometimes well, that's all you got. It's appropriate that you mention that because she won the Blockbuster Award for Favorite Ac- Actress for Action. Hmm. Uh, let's see, Sean Connery was nominated and Bing Rames was nominated for Supporting Actor, but both lost. She was the only one who won. Wow. So take that, Sean Connery. <laughs> Boom. Um, also, <laughs> On the flip side, though, mm-hmm. she was nominated for a Razzie for mm-hmm. this and The Haunting. Oh, yeah. Oh. S- surprisingly, Whoa. she lost to Heather Donahue for The Blair Witch Project. Oh, hey. Which we were just talking about before we started filming. <laughs> Understandable. You know, that, yeah. Really? Like, I thought that was, I mean, I don't think that was a bad performance by Heather Donahue. If anything, she's probably one of the better parts of that movie. Okay, fair. Like enough. so, yeah, yeah fair like, enough. I I, th- I think like I what, think I think the Blair Witch Project is one of those movies that also gets a lot of flack in retrospect. Totally. When in in the time it popped, it was bigger than anything people had seen. So, in a long I loved time. it when it came out. Like I th- I think you know the fact like I think I saw it like three two or three years ago and it actually still impressed me. So. It's creepy. And yeah. I mean the fact that like I think a lot of it is not acting in that movie. Yes. So to call her the worst actress Fair enough. seems a little weird yeah. just enough. by default. So I can suck that. on that. And The Haunting and Entrapment are a lot cheesier than Blair Witch. But you will get a kick out of the fact that Connery and Zeta-Jones were also nominated for the Razzie for Worst Couple. So yes. that adds to what you were saying already. Yep. So there you go. Moving right along, though, we're going to the 2000s and discussing High Fidelity. Yeah, Nick Hornsby classic. Yes, who also did what? About a Boy, I believe. Was uh, yeah, that? I think so, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, a story of I think a. Perks of Being a Wallflower is him? No, no, no. 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 Something That's else. Stephen Shabbat. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I know that. <laughs> believe me, I know that. Um, <laughs> Just because I talked to him. That's yes, I was going to say, because you interviewed him. <laughs> um, no, this is a story of a record store mm-hmm. owner who sort of reflects back on several relationships throughout his life that have influenced him once his, I don't know, was it fiancé? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're fiancé. It's the like current love interest. Of serious relationship. Yeah. Leaves him for another guy, mm-hmm. and he's sort of broken up about yes. that. Yes, and he's you know record store owner, so he equates everything in his life and love life with music, and so it's very much a combination of his love and musical experiences as they tied together. Yes, and in the context of this movie, Catherine Zeta-Jones plays one of his past girlfriends. Yes, Charlie, he, I think is her name, I would uh, say. Yeah, are, Charlie Nicholson. Boom! Look at you, good memory. <laughs> I mean, she, I mean, I guess... She kind of plays a uh, very um, self-centered, as yeah, I recall. Yeah, kind of over the top, kind of. Uh, it's sort of that classic sort of scenario of like the beautiful girl who gets whatever she wants. Mm-hmm. Sort of like she plays. And I think that trope. his whole relationship with her is about like waiting for her to dump him. Like, yeah, he's because he's, oh, he, he's dating up. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, so some of us married up. Yeah, uh, but you, he just you are literally. <laughs> I am John literally. Cusa. Yeah, and my wife is literally Catherine Zeta Jones. That's right. I said it. She's Catherine Zeta-Jones. I mean, like, she's fine in the movie. The problem for me, though, is, like, none of the relationships Mm -hmm. really left a mark with me. Really? What I remember from Mm -hmm. this movie is I remember John Cusack being quirky. Mm -hmm. I remember Jack Black being, like, one of his uh, employees working at the record store and being crazy. Role written for him. Uh, And I remember Tim Robbins being the sort of (laughs) dick guy who steals his serious relationship. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. those are what I remember from this movie. And the, the actual women were okay, but I don't really remember hmm. too much. It's funny, because I do, even though I don't remember most of the actresses' names, I remember a lot of the... I remember a lot of the women in this movie. But that's probably also because I watched this movie a lot when mm. I was depressingly single. Okay. So, maybe it, had, it just uh, connected Young Greg me. was really... Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, I think it's interesting that Catherine Zeta-Jones is only credited in the final cast list and not the main credits. I mean, granted, her role isn't gigantic, so that's not a huge thing, but, I mean, after Entrapment and Mask of Zorro, she had blown up enough that it's not like she was unrecognizable. Yeah, you're surprised they didn't just sell it upon that, even though maybe... It was really a John Cusack vehicle. But I'm saying, you know, you know, it's like when they re-release a film like 20 yeah. years after mm-hmm. its release and the pursuit yeah. is like and nobody in the movie they're like starring like that, Jesse Eisenberg. Exactly. I was just going to say that Jesse Eisenberg movie where his face is on the cover and I think he's only in it for, for like, like five minutes yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, I also think it's interesting just coincidentally because this happens a lot. I didn't realize it happened this many times. This is the eighth film 
that John and Joan Cusack are both in. It doesn't surprise me at all. I think they Class, like together. 16 Candles, Grand View, USA, or Grand View, USA, Broadcast News, Say Anything, Gross Point Blank, Cradle or Rock on this. Yeah, it makes total sense. I mean, I think they like to work together. I know, but I mean, it's kind of weird because sometimes they like play siblings, sometimes they play not siblings, more friends. I, I don't know. I just think that's strange. I would think... I think he's just throwing her a bone. Like, Joan, Joan, <laughs> Cusack's, true, Joan Cusack's, like, a very good actress, but mm -hmm. I don't think she gets enough credit. And so oh, he's yeah. probably just like, she needs more parts. I'm going to throw you some parts That's because a, yeah. you're a very good actress. And I can see this it. is how you have to get them. I'll give I can them to see you. it. So she, I mean, not to say, as I said, she's not, it's not that she's not talented. No. I just feel like she's sadly overlooked I agree. a lot of the time. I would, I would agree with you on that. Um, John Cusack, though, got nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Comedy Musical. Mm -hmm. He lost. George Clooney, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Ooh. That's, I'm sorry. That's a tough I'm one, sorry, yeah. John. I'm going to give it to George. Yeah, that's, that. a, that's a tough one. Like, I'm a Dapper Dan man. Yeah. I mean, maybe if you would use Dapper a, Dan instead of Fop, we yeah, would have had this. Yeah, this is a Dapper problem, Dan kind of podcast. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's how we roll. <laughs> and uh, it lost best screenplay based on previously produced, mater or, uh, previously produced material. Mm -hmm. um, published material, sorry. Okay. Um, to Traffic. Ah, uh, yes. Which is, again, another tough one. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. you can kind of see that. Which is only appropriate that we bring that one up mm -hmm. because she is also in Traffic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is the Steven Soderbergh directed film mm -hmm. um, about, I think there are three different storylines. Yes. You got the, uh, was it, the cop down on the border? Yeah, you've got the like Mexican American border, you've got one in Mexico and one fully in America. Of the three stories, if I remember correctly. Uh, I would say, okay, we've got the politician one with Michael yes. Douglas. Yeah. You've got the... I always think of them in their color. I'm like, the blue part with Michael Douglas, the, the yellow. The uh, cop <laughs> in Mexico with mm -hmm. Benicio Del Toro. And I would say the the drug cartel one led by Don Cheadle. That's right, yes. Okay. I mean, you, you, you could easily say, yeah, you know, right. that one was um, like the Catherine Zeta-Jones one or whatever, but mm. I feel like it's mostly a Don Cheeto one yeah. because he's trying to track down the guy who kills mm -hmm. his partner, essentially. Uh, um, this film had 135 speaking roles and was shot in over 110 locations in eight different cities. It was also noteworthy because they filmed each different storyline with a different, uh, yeah, different lens. Yeah, different color. type of camera, I think. Yeah. Also, like, full-on, like, completely different, which is very obvious when you're watching the film. Yeah. I mean, you know... Catherine Jones was pregnant during the filming of this. She had already met and been engaged to Michael Douglas before this film. But it's also funny because their roles don't overlap in this no, movie. They're no. very separate. He's yeah. spent, I think he spends all his time in Washington doing with his daughter being mm -hmm. becoming addicted to drugs, even yes. though he's the drug czar. And she plays the wife mm -hmm. of the drug cartel. Yep. Or, yes, the drug cartel whose husband gets arrested mm -hmm. And then there's sort of like the lawyer played by Dennis Quaid, as I yes, recall, who I sort of right, like yeah. kind of fucking them o over. Originally, she was supposed to be a mother of two, but they changed the role when she was pregnant to have her be six months pregnant instead. I mean, still had the same dramatic tension, sure. someone protecting her family. I also think it's it's an interesting, noteworthy thing about this movie, besides how amazing it is and that it's Soderbergh, which we'll clearly come back to, is that Benicio Del Toro is one of only five actors to have won an Academy Award for a part mainly spoken in a foreign language. Because he speaks most of his dialogues in Spanish. Yeah, totally. uh, check out the list, though, of the other five. Like, this is a pretty noteworthy list to be on. Sophia Loren, Robert nice. De Niro, Marillion Cotard, and Rob Roberto Benigni. Like, pretty good list, I mean, yeah. if you're talking about, like, actors doing foreign parts, that's a, that's a pretty, pretty strong list. It's a pretty yeah, strong a list. list. You know, I, I mean, it's funny also, because this film was nominated for one, two, three, four, five mm -hmm. Academy Awards, and it won every one of them. But Best Picture, which it lost to Gladiator. It won Best Actor for Benicio. Mm -hmm. It won Best Director for Steven Soderbergh, which I think was a surprise because mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, who Aaron Brockovich came That's out right, that same yes. year, and there was wonder if he'd split the vote or mm -hmm. something like that. I, I think. I think it's fascinating. Was it Crouching Tiger was the probably same yeah. There was ninety two thousand yeah probably. I think there was interest of whether Ang Lee was going to win that. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that like four, four of, of four Academy Awards that were won, they were won by a Steven, a Steven, a Steven, and a Benicio. Yeah, because Steven <laughs> Gagan won yeah. for best screenplay, mm -hmm. and Steven Marione won for best editing. Yep, so. <laughs> it's three Stevens and a Benicio. <laughs> yeah, pretty awesome. But yeah, you know. Um, Zay Jones was good in this, mm -hmm. not really a huge part of it, but she's really interesting, sort of as uh, unnerving as a 
I don't, she's not the cartel head, yeah. but when he, she sort of realizes what's going on with Dennis Quaid mm-hmm. trying to like get with her and get rid of the husband yeah. as part of it, like she she can be kind of scary. Yeah, yeah, she can be kind of scary. So. Let's say she married into that family for a reason. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. Um, building on the awards credentials of mm-hmm. this movie, a couple years later, she did Chicago. Yes. This is the musical based on the Bob Fosse um, musical play, Chicago. Yeah, which itself is a re like a resurgence or a revival of a nineteen like twenty six musical, I believe. By Fred Ebb. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, talk about like. Musical made into a musical made into a movie, and I think there was like another musical Which that came out after the movie. Directed by Rob Marshall, making his theatrical debut. Nice. So that's a pretty amazing shot right yeah. out of the gate. I mean, you think about other people, maybe like Sam Mendes or somebody mm-hmm. else, like to win that many Academy Awards right out of the gate. It's pretty Seriously. amazing. Um, story of uh, murderesses Velma Kelly and Roxy Hart. Mm-hmm. Played who- by. Catherine Zeta-Jones and Renee Zellweger. Yep, who find themselves on death row together and fight for the fame that will keep them from the gallows in 1920s Chicago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No surprise here, I have not seen this movie. Really? No. It's actually a very good movie, Spencer. I believe, I I believe that. that to be true. I will say that. But I find musicals to be very distracting. I know you do. Um, I, find, I think it's some interesting things about this film. Uh, one being that it's the most recent Best Picture Award winner to not win Best Screenplay or Best Director. Yes, I noticed that as well, with Roman Polanski mm-hmm. winning Best Director and Bill Condon winning or losing to the pianists mm-hmm. for screenplay. Which I think is just interesting. I don't, I don't, I don't think I connected or thought that regularly that those that you usually got if you got Best Picture, sure. you usually got one of the other two. No, that may, uh, for me, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah. um, I material. think it's interesting that uh, Rob Marshall wanted Catherine Zeta-Jones to have like long hair in the movie, but she was really insistent on that bob because she didn't want her hair to fall over her face and have people think to doubt that she did all the dancing herself. Oh, Which I think is an interesting thing, harking back to the entrapment doing her own stunts. Like, you know, you're like, hey, this is a movie. Like, I think Richard Gere took like six months of tap dancing lessons for his part. So it's like, if you got people working that hard to do it, you're like, I want to make sure that, you know, people she, know it's me. She's finally rewarded for that by winning Best Supporting Actress, mm-hmm. which is amazingly her only Oscar nomination. Really? Yeah. So she's won and Who would you consider the the best the main actress in this movie well that's uh, that's the interesting thing is because they're all considered supporting actresses Mm -hmm. i believe i mean or yeah oh no renee zellweger was deemed the lead actress which is which is weird because of the following fact a long battle took place between the agents of renee zellweger and the agents of Catherine zeta jones over top billing of the movie Mm -hmm. and who was the bigger who was the star more than the other in the end they did a diagonal billing which was set upon which depending on the way you read it uh top to bottom or right to left looks like um, or left to right both appear to get top billing because it's like Catherine Zeta-Jones or it's like Catherine Zeta-Jones name is here and like Renee Zellweger's here and it says with Richard Gere below it and mm. it's like a weird like depending on how you look at it like talk about arguments to the point where your poster art is changed because you have people fighting over who's the main I mean it's, it's impressive how many nominations I got like Renee Zellweger lead actress John C. Riley. oh John C. Riley is amazing Queen in this Latifah, movie supporting actress also amazing in this yeah. movie so it, it did well for itself I'll give it that John C. Riley was really really good in this movie he's always good man. Uh, yeah this is like pre I, I, I really like the pre um Adam McKay and Will Ferrell, John C. Reilly, like Magnolia, yeah, actor. Magnolia yeah. and this. Or just stuff where he's got we- different roles that aren't just like, I'm the goofy guy. I find he's sort of going, and I'm hopeful of this, the opposite direction of Rob Corddry. Mm-hmm. Like, Rob Corddry was sort of semi serious, finally, in yeah. Warm Bodies. Yeah. Like, he's going, uh, John C. Reilly's going way to the comedic angle. And, yes. like, he was so good as a dramatic actor. It's mm-hmm. really kind of a shame that he's not doing that. Yeah, in this movie, I mean, Catherine Zeta Jones plays a ruthless villain. Mm-hmm. Like, it's. If you ever watched it, Spencer, I think I'll you would be. I'll probably watch it someday. I think you would be impressed by. Uh, well, I mean, both her and Renee Zellweger are kind of viciously evil in, as far as the story is placed. But Catherine Zeta Jones does that great job, which I think goes well with her look to being like, oh, I'm. I'm totally innocent and I'm a good guy, and then mm-hmm. being like, nah, I'm actually a bitch behind it all. Like, that's a great movie. I I'm think on. I saw this on the theater, to be honest. Wow. Look at that. Good for you. <laughs> uh, moving right along, we're going to go to another oft forgotten movie that she did mm-hmm. Intolerable Cruelty. Oh, this Coen is, Brothers, yeah, man. Yeah, Coen Brothers, you know, you think back. 
in the Coen Brothers uh, history, like this and probably the Lady Killers are the two that are just completely oh, totally. forgotten mm -hmm. or overlooked intentionally. I don't know what you want to say. <laughs> but, and a lot of their yeah, earlier stuff. Just People like to forget about things like Barton Fink and Blood Simple and pay attention to Racing Arizona. Miller's Crossing. Oh, that's a great one, too. Yeah, but again, you know, yeah, I forgot. I only thought of it just because I saw it on TV yesterday. <laughs> Um, I hope not for the first time. No. Okay. No, I mean, I just saw that it was playing okay. on TV. I was going to have to, I was gonna have to smack you, Spencer. Yeah. No, 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 no. This is the intolerable cruelty is the story of a divorce. Um, divorce lawyer. Divorce lawyer who is representing the husband mm -hmm. who falls in love with the wife, played by Zeta Jones, yes, during who, their... Yeah, who kind of appears to be gold digger-esque. Yes. And he still falls for her. Yes. Um, it is... A comedy. Oh, I love really. this movie. Yeah. I just saw it pretty recently on HBO. Did again. you? Really? Yeah. I was like, oh, this is on. I guess I'll just have to watch the whole thing again. Not surprisingly, another George Clooney Coen Brothers team up. You mm -hmm. know, the last one worked out pretty well for yeah. them with the O Brother. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's got a, such a good cast. I know, too. so goofy. I mean, George Clooney, Catherine Zeta Jones, Jeffrey Rush, mm -hmm. Billy Bob Thornton, Richard Jenkins. Like, oh, it's got I love a Jenkins. very talented cast. I mean, it's a Coen Brothers film. Mm -hmm. This is one of those films on paper that you're like, how can this miss? Mm -hmm. And honestly, when you watch it, it's not like it's a bad movie. I just think, I don't know. I don't know if it was just marketed bad or if just people didn't care about those two as like a, in a love story. I don't know why this movie didn't do better because whenever I watch it, I'm always amazed by how consistently good it is. It's still Coen Brothers. I mean, it's it's still zany. It's still fun. Uh, I mean, I think maybe it's the same sort of problems that the Lady Killers mm. um, fell into in that it's it's. I mean, yeah, it's 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 good, but it's mm -hmm. it's not really unique necessarily. Okay. Like it's kind of a cliched idea. Okay. Like I guess. I mean, you could think of like was it. Um, What's that? Uh, I don't know if you even remember this. There was a Matthew Perry film where it's like serving Sarah, okay. where he played a process server who was serving divorce papers to That's right. Elizabeth Hurley, mm -hmm. um, and he falls for her. You know, it's like there there are any well, number of like Pretty Woman is an interesting parallel because uh, because you're thinking about the idea of like oh this guy like takes the lady and he wants her even though her standing is looks totally unfavorable and he finds something worthwhile to like get back together with her i mostly bring that up because this was originally helmed to be set to be helmed by andrew bergman as a reteaming of richard Gere and julie roberts the story was originally <laughs> i bet it probably would have been better received if it were them honestly uh, like I I don't there's so. some like that's like why runaway bride was a thing yeah like that was true. not a great movie at all but people were excited about it because it was the two of them teaming back yeah. up so, so I, another thing i found interesting is that Catherine zeta jones way of acting in the film was uh modeled upon uh katherine hepburn's romantic <laughs> roles and the way that she plays kind of like a strong aloof standoffish character who's still like captivating and intriguing because you don't know what's going on behind her the another thing i will say is that like the coen brothers are enjoyable at comedy mm -hmm. but i will say their strongest films tend to be the more dramatic ones honestly you think back i mean no country yeah um i mean come on man Fargo. true grit Fargo's not <laughs> Fargo's not a laugh out loud movie all the time. There's a yeah, few is, funny man. moments, but like So your friend in the wood chipper, that's the most hilarious yeah, side of that yeah, movie. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, their 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 more dramatic stuff tend to no, be yeah. their strongest material. And so I mean, you know, even Oh Brother, like mm -hmm. it's got elements of comedy in it, but it's not necessarily just a comedy throughout. So yeah. it's like I'm not saying that they're weak at that, but mm. it's not their strongest yeah. attribute. And so maybe that sort of hurt them a little bit mm. because it's not like when people see comedies, maybe they want stuff that they really like gut laugh uh, at. Yeah. And it's not, it's more of a thinking comedy. Like they're funny I moments. Guess. Yeah. But okay. I'm just, I'm proposing theories. Okay. I'm proposing. That's what I'm doing. All right. <laughs> because as you said, like this is one of those things that like it doesn't make a lot of sense just yeah. why this is so off. Oh, I mean, it was nominated for like no awards, really. Really, nothing. I mean, like it Sad. got nominated for an Empire Award for Best Director and hmm. Golden Trailer Awards for Best Romance. But that's like pretty much it. No Razzies, no hmm. Academy Awards, nothing. So it's just it was like a speed bump. People just mm -hmm. forgot. So yeah. I'm just trying to figure out why. Yeah, so maybe forth. the title threw people off. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe and maybe somebody can write in and give us a good theory because yeah. I would love to hear it if somebody knows. Yeah. Brings us to this Friday, the 8th of February. Mm -hmm. We're talking side effects. Yes. Which uh, is Steven Soderbergh. Yes. yes. One of his last directorial projects. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I believe he said he's going to retire at age 50. <laughs> How many times has that guy said he's. Re he's like the Stephen King of filmmaking at this point. I'm done, but I'm after well, this one. I mean, but I'm he, done, but well, after he, this one. He said he was going to be a few 
a few I, years out. But he had said like after like he did, I forget a Liberace biopic and yeah. a few other films. But isn't wasn't at one point like Contagion supposed to be his last movie too? Like I don't know, I don't know about that. But the the thing I will say about this is mm-hmm. I don't recall side effects being mentioned at all in that list yeah. when he said like these are the last totally. few films I want to mm-hmm. do. So I, so I don't, clearly a passionate project for him if he just jumped on it, you know. Heard very good things about it thus far. We've had one of Huge our reviewers, I believe, Nick, Nick Allers, when mm. saw it already. He was nice. writing the review for the site, and he seemed to be pleasantly surprised about it. You've got Rooney Mara, Jude Law, Channing Tatum, Catherine Zeta-Jones. I mean... Yeah, pretty... pretty. And it's about, uh, I believe, what, like an antidepressant? I'm trying to remember. Emily and Martin are a successful New York couple who unravel when a new drug prescribed by Emily psychiatrist intended to treat anxiety has unexpected side effects which somebody get murdered mm. so mm-hmm. she thinks she's responsible for it yeah you know? i think there's a lot of like what's real what's not kind of effects supposed to be good or type things going on i in also film. think it's like is somebody setting her up mm-hmm. is it something yeah I don't unintended know. side effects i know it skips uh, around different timelines supposedly so Interesting. yeah like supposedly for the reviews of the film they are not supposed to let anyone in after it started because it jumps around awesome. time wise. So awesome. yeah. I'm all for that. And you know, if anybody can do that well, Soderbergh is gonna be able, yeah. in my opinion be able to do it well. Because I mean look at Contagion. Contagion doesn't follow really a single character for And he point. loves him some Channing Tatum lately <laughs> between Haywire and Magic Mike. Like uh-huh. I guess I shouldn't be surprised that there's yet another project with I mean it's not like Tatum is horrible, but no, it's he's kind good. of surprising. I would, I would that, defend yeah. Ch- Jane Tatum actually, but yeah. it's just it's like funny to find his newest muse to be. <laughs> yeah, now, Tatum. now that he's moved on from Clooney. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, but you know, yeah, I think it looks interesting. I, I I feel like I feel like Soderbergh almost I won't say can't lose, but I want to say that whether good or bad, almost every project Soderbergh has picked in like the last five to ten years has been interesting in some way. Here's what I'll say about this. I think it looks interesting, and I hear it sounds interesting, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's going to be a huge hit. It just doesn't look like but the I mean, kind of film. Was Contagion that's... a huge hit? Even though it looked interesting, I think interesting, it did better than this will do. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I think this film looks like an interesting one, sort of like a perfect murdery kind of thing, hmm. mystery type stuff. But I just don't think that's going to be a big money maker. I mean, and it's maybe February. The... February is not the I best mean, you think month about, for movie like, releases. Yeah. No, that's def- that's definitely part of it. Like, it just. It do- I haven't heard a lot of buzz about it. Mm. Like, I haven't seen a heck of a lot of trailers for it. Like, I just, I feel like this movie, I mean, maybe they're not shooting for, like, a $50 million opening. Maybe they're aiming low, and it'll do better than they expect. But I maybe. I, w- I would say, like, you know, I would think $10, 15000000 million opening for this thing. <laughs> I'm not expecting huge results. But. Interesting thing I just read this morning, also, in relation to Soderbergh. Supposedly, there was supposed to be a Contagion 2 in the works that they're thinking of turning into a television show. Just throwing that out there. I think news info that you hear here on the Big Up I think that that's sort of one of those things like Walking Dead that works just yeah. because that's an ongoing problem. You don't an epidemic that is, shit. is a long thing. It's not like we're that. like boom, cured, <laughs> done. Unless you're playing a video game, and then it is. It's like disease or most movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Big outbreak. Up. Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, join us next week for our DVD rundown for the week of February 12th. Mm-hmm. Oh, halfway through February already. Almost. Um, Almost Two days literally. away. Yeah. Uh, and as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. Phone number, 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.tv, Roku, Miro. You can check in and get glue. Get some stickers, badges, sticky badges, badgy stickers, catch badgers. You. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We'll catch you later. Can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.